Sterling falls on Scottish referendum news and the Deputy Bank of England Governor resigns. This is the Daily Effects European Market Outlook. You're with me, Katie Pilgrim. Let's have a look at the bourses and see what's happening. And we're still in the red here in London, as you can see, despite some positive reports coming out. I'll get to those a bit later. We've got it flat in Germany there, down for France. We had some disappointing data coming out for Germany earlier on. Investor confidence rose less than expected. That's as political uncertainty weighed on the outlook of Europe's so-called powerhouse. Well, according to the latest ZEW survey, political risks from upcoming EU elections are keeping uncertainty surrounding the German economy at a relatively high level. I'm going to talk about political uncertainty a little later on, but first of all, let's get back to our top story because the British Prime Minister now has a battle to face on both fronts with a potential Scottish referendum and igniting Article 50 with the EU. So the Scottish National Party has warned May not to slam the brakes on a second independent referendum fearing that the British Prime Minister will try to delay it. After the SNP leader Nicola Sturgeon's announcement on Monday, Angus Robertson, the party's deputy leader, has weighed in, insisting the vote take place as early as autumn next year, rather than see the Prime Minister drive us off a Brexit cliff. Those were his words. Uh, for Theresa May, this is a conundrum, because rejecting the vote would likely arouse support for independence, while accepting it could undermine the exit negotiations with the EU. Well, let's have a look at the sterling and just see how it's responding. I'll just go through a few, a few levels. It's still at that two-month low against the US dollar. That's really as the reality of the Scottish referendum is, is being realised just now, because initially, if we look at Monday, we had gains. Um, initially from it but as I say it seems like um, now that it's being digested and uh, there's more noise coming out about it we're having a completely different view this Tuesday. Cable has fallen from a recent February 24 high of 1257 to a current level of 121 as sellers take control of the market leaving the January 15 low of 119 quite vulnerable as you can see just here. Um, so, I mean, the situation just now is that we've got sterling down, we've got pressure coming out. And there's another factor as well, because I just want to mention, of course, the US Federal Reserve, they're expecting to raise their interest rates by 25 basis points. This would be another negative for cable. So we're going to be talking about cable a lot this week, no doubt. OK, more domestic news then. Charlotte Hogg, who was set to become the Bank of England's Deputy Governor for Markets and Banking, she's resigned. This comes after she failed to reveal details of her brother's role at Barclays. The bank's code of conduct, it does require such connections like this to be declared. And as such, Miss Hogg, she fell short of very high standards, they said, required by them. And um, she's been set aside. They've set aside their approval for her, as they say, and she's resigned as a consequence. All right, let's move on and talk about some of these movers and shakers that I spoke about, because the insurance giant Prudential, let's just double check that it's still up. Yeah, OK, so it's 2% up. It was up 3% actually, so it just dropped slightly. Um, this was after reporting a record operating profit. Strong growth in its Asian business helped push up the profits by 7% to £4.3 billion. So these Asian operations, they rose by 28% to £1.5 billion, but UK profits fell. They fell by a third, and that's thanks to a £175 million charge uh, that they had to endure. Well, we're actually now seeing the levels last seen in April 2015. As I said, it's dropped off just even now while we're on air, but it's still it's still gaining. Another gainer, though, is the online supermarket, Ocado. Uh, this, well, it's up now 3.5% on the back of comments from its chief financial officer that it's, it's confident the company will secure international deals. And the chief executive as well, Tim Steiner, said that the group was seeing the first sign of a change in market pricing after years of food price deflation, which partly caused the fierce supermarket pricing wars that we have here in the UK. Uh, we have Lidl and um, those types of stores in German budget stores that come into this country and uh, they offer fantastic deals, frankly. Uh, so the share price is up about 14% in the last six weeks or so. And obviously, inflation 
sterling is all feeding into this now because the supermarkets will have to put up the prices are all in the same boat all right let's talk about the european politics that i spoke about a little bit earlier on because it's all eyes on the dutch elections we're now on the eve of it and the current prime minister mark rutt he said that he wants the netherlands to be the country that stops the rise of populism in europe when the dutch go to the polls on wednesday he said his country should be the quarter finals to beat the wrong sort of populism in a year in which a number of eu countries go to the polls so we've got the semi-final he said with the french election in april may and the final would be with the german election in september all right let's look ahead to wednesday i mentioned one of the things that's happening obviously we've got the dutch election but in terms of the economic data the key one has to be the federal reserve meeting it takes center stage there's also two oil supply data releases as well coming out from the IEA and the EIA. We've had oil plummeting this week, so that'd be a key one. A snapshot as well into the UK's labour market. We've got the latest unemployment rate. We've got the wage growth as well. We've got Japan's industrial production. We've got France's CPI, US CPI, retail sales, business inventories. In terms of the corporate data, there's a few of those as well. We've got Hikma Pharmaceuticals. We've got the energy giant Eon, BMW. It's a big week for German Motors and Oracle as well. Heading into the cloud, so they want to. It's a transition mode for this um, technical company over on Wall Street. That's all from me. Let's have a double check and just see what the market are up to here in Europe. As you can see, we've still got declines. It's three tenths down for the FTSE, still flat in Germany and uh, entrenched in the red in France. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. See you tomorrow.